Hi Year 6 and welcome to Tuesday's reading lesson. Remember last week when I said that on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday we'll be reading separate texts but they all have a theme. Our theme this week is critiquing the media. So first of all let's have a think about what the word critiquing means. We've used it in lessons before when we do our peer critique, especially in art. So if we look down here, critique means a detailed analysis and assessment of something. So we're going to look at the media and we're going to analyse and assess it. So our first text is about Maradona and Miaham. As you can see, they are both footballers. Have you heard of them before? What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and read along with me to the text about Maradona and Miaham. The video is on the link um, on your timetable and also it, you can find the videos on the Hooklo page in the, on our YouTube channel in the playlist text extracts. Once you've done that, come back and unpause and join the lesson. So now you've read the text, we know a bit more about both footballers. The first part of today's lesson will be about Maradona and the second part will be about Mia Hamm. So the first quick start questions are on Maradona. Which country did Maradona play for? How tall was Maradona? What was his most infamous goal called? Which World Cup did the infamous goal help Maradona win? Which position did Maradona play in? And why was he kicked out of the 1994 World Cup? Remember, you don't need to write full sentences for these answers, just quick retrieval. Pause the video, answer the questions, and then come back to find the answers. Fantastic, let's have a look at the answers. So, which country did Maradona play for? It was Argentina. How tall was he? Five foot five. What was his infamous goal called? The Hand of God. Which World Cup did the infamous goal help Maradona win? 1986. Which position did Maradona play in? He was a forward. And why was he kicked out of the 1994 World Cup? It was because he failed a drug test. Give yourself a tick and let's move on. So first of all, we're going to look at some vocabulary that was used in the Maradona text. The first one is a missed kicked clearing attempt. To understand this, first we must understand what the prefix miss means. So the prefix miss, if we put that in front of the word, it means to do something badly or wrongly. So the root word is kicked. Miss means he did it badly or wrongly. So a miss kicked clearing attempt. He did a bad kick trying to clear the ball. The next one, a wily four foot, a wily five foot five forward. Wily means skilled at gaining advantage. So he was even, he was a good five foot five forward. One of the most controversial goals. Controversial is a word we've heard in our curriculum lessons this this term. So a con if something's in controversy or it's controversial, it means that many people have different opinions on it. So it can cause disagreements. The next word, infamous, his infamous hand of God, hand of God goal. So if we look at the root word here, which is famous, infamous means you are famous, but for the wrong thing. So you're famous for a bad reason. Used his smaller size to his advantage. Advantage means um, you've got a better position to do something. You're able, you're more able to do something than somebody else. So what he did is he used his smaller size against bigger players to his advantage so he could whiz around the other players or get in positions that bigger players couldn't necessarily get into. Maradona was outspoken and rebellious. What does this tell us? So if someone's outspoken, it means they're not ashamed to share their opinions, even if those opinions are shocking or controversial. And rebellious means you go against authority or you don't want to do what is expected of you. So it shows that Maradona was both of these things. So he didn't mind sharing his opinions and he didn't always do what he was meant to do. How many of those did you know? Or did you use the text to read around them and guess even if you hadn't heard them before? So the first question here is Maradona's hand of God goal is infamous. Why do you think this is? So we've just looked at the word infamous. So it's famous for the wrong reasons and it was called a goal. So why do you think the goal is infamous? Pause the video, answer the question and come back. Welcome back. So, again, this is why do you think this is? So it is an opinion question. So Maradona's hand of goal is infamous. I think this is because 
even though he scored a goal and they managed to win the World Cup, technically it wasn't a proper goal as it was scored by his hand. And that is why it's infamous. It's famous for the wrong reasons. Next question. You've got three minutes. Find and copy any words or phrases that show the reader that Diego Maradona was very good at football. Pause the video now and put a timer on for three minutes and find and copy any words or phrases that you can that show he was very good at football. OK, so you've had your three minutes. Let's see if you found any phrases the same as me. Master playmaker. At his best, Maradona might have been the greatest ever. He could use his footwork to dance around them like a ballerina. Doesn't say he was good at football, but it shows he was because he danced around them. Wiley five foot five forward for Argentina. So we learned uh, we learned earlier that Wiley meant skilled at gaining an advantage. So if you're skilled at something, you're good at it. He could charge past opponents like a bull. So this is saying that he went past opponents. And in football, to get past opponents is what you've got to do. So that shows he was good at football. Here it says he scored the goal of the century and there was no controversy about that one. Saying that he scored a goal and no one could disagree with it. Only three touches. He escaped two defenders and was off down the right side. Sideline. Here he says he escaped two defenders. If you can do that in football, you must be pretty skilled. Did you find any more that I haven't found? Next question then. We can see clearly these days that Maradona used his hand to score. Do you and your partner think that Argentina should be retrospectively stripped of their win and why? So I've included here the definition of retrospectively. So it means we need to consider past events or situations. So we need to think about Maradona as a football in the past. And then we need to use that to think about should they really be stripped of their win? Were they going to win anyway? Were they good enough to win? Again, this is your opinion and I want you to see if you can find evidence to back it up in the text. Pause the video, answer the question and come back when you're ready. Great. I'm not going to go over the answer to this one because this again is your opinion. So I'll look forward to reading them when I get your learning packs back. There were 53 fouls committed against Diego Maradona in the 1986 World Cup. That is a lot of fouls. Why might Maradona have been fouled so much? Answer the question and use evidence to back up your text. Pause the video and unpause when you're ready. So one answer for this could be, I think Maradona was fouled so much because he was a good footballer. He had skill. It says earlier in the text that he escaped defenders. He went, he went down the sideline. He used his size as an advantage so other teams might have thought they might foul him because he was a really good player so if they fouled him and got him off the pitch they'd have more of a chance of winning do you believe that diego maradona has earned his title of one of the best football players of all time again this is your opinion but you've got to back it up so you could say yes i do believe that diego maradona was one of the best football players i believe this because he says, where is it? It says here, I believe he was the best footballer of, of all time. He scored the goal of the century. Now, a century is 100 years, so that's a long time. If you don't agree with that, then say why. I don't believe Maradona earned his title because he was very controversial and rebellious. And also, he was kicked out for failing a drug test. So again, this is your opinion. Pause the video, answer the question and then come back to join us. So the next quick start questions are about Mia Hamm. Which country did Mia Hamm play for? When did her international team start existing? When did Hamm retire? How old was she when she represented her country for the first time? And in which year did her team win the Women's World Cup? Pause the video, answer the questions and then join us again for the rest of the lesson. Let's have a look at the answers. Which country did Mia Hamm play for? She played for America. Her international team started existing in 1985. When did she retire? 2004. How old was she when she represented a country? She was 15 years old. 
and in which year did her team win the Women's World Cup? Well, they won in 1991, 95 and 99. Gives yourself a tick for all those you got right. We're going to have a look at some of the vocabulary here that we looked at when we read the Mia Hamm text. So let's have a look at the first word. Debuted. Debuted means you perform for the first time. I'm sure debut means it was her first time on the pitch. Gave a generation of girls something to strive for. If you strive for something, it means you make extra effort to achieve it. So she inspired girls to make that extra effort to play football. The most lethal scorer. So lethal means harmful, destructive. But in this sense, it means she ought, she scored a lot and she must have had power in her shots. Ham quietly developed into the most dominant player in the sport. So dominant means you have power or influence over others. So that shows that she was a good player, as more skillful and she dominated the pitch. So she had influence on the pitch. Her trademark was her killer instinct. So killer instinct means you've got ruthless determination to win. And that was her trademark. It means she used it all the time. It was something that we can associate with Mia Hamm. Her skills and charisma helped women's soccer grow to new heights. So skill, she did something well. Charisma is a charm and attractiveness that can help others. So because of how she was on the pitch, women's soccer grew because people were inspired by her. So first question, why is Mia Hamm an important football player? And remember, you've got to use evidence from the text to back it up. Let's have a look at this one for an example first. And over the next 17 years, she gave genera a generation of girls something to strive for. So she was important because she inspired girls to play football. See if you can find any other evidence in the text as to why Mia Hamm is an important football player. Pause the video and then join us to have a look at some answers. OK, let's have a look at this one here. A tireless worker, Ham became the most lethal scorer in women's soccer and she could just as easily set up her teammates for goals. Her success with the national team helped elevate, so that means grow, women's soccer to new heights. And by the time she retired in 2004, she was an iconic female athlete of her generation. So again, this also says that she's an inspiration. Iconic means people looked up to her. Of, of this generation she was successful she was a team she was a team player because she helped set up her teammates for goals through ham skills and charisma helps women's soccer grow to new heights so again grow into new heights so it's showing that women's soccer became more popular because of how mia ham played on the pitch Girls did not dream of playing for the US women's soccer team when Mia Hamm was born in 1972. Why do you think it is important that the author of this non-fiction text include this line? Pause the video and then join us back to discuss. OK, so I think that the, um, the author has included this line to show us that when Mia Hamm was born, women's soccer wasn't really... It wasn't really big. People didn't think women played soccer. It was a man's sport. So this line shows us that during Mia's lifetime, football has women's football has grown and Mia Hamm has been part of that. She's been an inspiration. OK, so we've got three words here. Inspirational, hardworking and intelligent. I want you to rank them to describe Mia Hamm. So number one is what you think she deserves to be called the most. And number three is what you think she deserves to be called the least and can you give a reason why you've ch why you've put them in this order so your solo work for this lesson is to compare maradona and mia ham and use evidence to back up your opinion this is all your opinion so you, as long as you use evidence you should get the question right so think about how their legacies differ and do you believe that one should be more revered in the world of football and why? Which one do you think should be remembered more for their contributions to football? Have a go and I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to read the next few chapters of our class novel after you finish today's reading lesson.